Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Olympus Camedia C5000 Zoom. Uh, I believe it was just made in 2003, but that's this camera's vintage anyway. It's a 5 megapixel digital camera. Uses a 7.6 by 5.7 millimeter charge coupled device sensor, a CCD. That's also sized as 1 over 1.76 inches. It uh, records JPEGs or TIFFs on XD cards, not SD. They're, they're different. It has a 7.8 to 23.4 millimeter zoom. Uh, full frame equivalent, that's 38 to 114. So it's not a super long reach, but it's, you know, it's got a nice range for a point and shoot. Uh, at widest, it's f2.8. That's not something you see a lot, even in modern digital cameras. Pretty sweet. That's at uh, 38 millimeters. Widest is f4.8 at 114 millimeters. The minimum aperture is f8. The lens is seven elements in six groups. It's continuous autofocus while you're monkeying around with it. And then it does focus lock with a half press. It also has a uh, green LED, which tells you your focus is locked. The orange LED is telling you you should probably use flash. In normal mode, it close focuses to 19.7 inches. It's about 50 centimeters. In regular macro mode that you can select just with this button on the back, and it cycles through, let me bring it back up, cycles through, tells you macro is off, and then spot metering, macro on, and spot metering macro on. Let me turn macro back off. Then as a super macro mode, you have to get down in the menu to get to that, and that gives it a close focus of 1.6 inches, 4 centimeters, to 7.9 inches, about 20 centimeters. I can't remember if I said regular macro is 7.9 to 19.7 inches, 20 centimeters to 50 centimeters. Uh, it has an optical uh, viewfinder. It's nice, it's got uh, just a plus in it to show you kind of where the autofocus point is, but it does zoom with the lens, so that's pretty nice. It has a 1.8 inch, it's a 46 millimeter LCD. It's not super high res, it's 134,000 pixels. The shutter is electronically controlled. It goes from 16 seconds to 1 1,000th 1, of a second. Um, it has different modes up here. Um, I've been shooting with it on program auto exposure, and then playback, full auto, portrait, sports, night portrait, landscape, night view, and then it's got a selfie mode that uh, you do have to point it to yourself, but it focuses on you and leaves it that way. Dedicated movie setting, and then something that's nice, it has what's called my mode. So if you get in down in the menus and monkey with your image settings, um, so you can set saturation, contrast, white balance, sharpness, noise reduction. So if you get a set of settings that you really like, you can assign it to the my mode position on the dial. So that's actually pretty sweet. Um, it also does, let me switch it over here, aperture, aperture priority, shutter priority, and full manual. And if you're in aperture priority, I'm going to turn it off here, my battery's almost dead. Um, the up and down buttons on this selector here uh, move the aperture through its steps and the left and right are exposure compensation. If you're in shutter priority, the up and down move the shutter speed up and down and you still get exposure compensation. And then you're in man if you're in manual, and I might have this backwards, I'll have to look at the manual. Up and down uh, moves through the aperture settings left and right moves through the shutter settings. So it's a little bit clunky to use. You have to go in the manual into the menu 
and tell it what you want this setting on the dial to be, uh, aperture, shutter, or manual. And then when you swing it to the dial, it's in that mode. If you need to switch from aperture priority to shutter priority or manual, you got to dive back in the menu. It's not too bad, though. Let me turn this guy back on. It might go dead on us while I'm making this video. I should have charged the battery. Anyway, you go into the menu, and then mode menu, and then camera, and you go down to ASM. Right now it's an A for aperture priority. You go over, toggle through the settings. Now it's in shutter priority. So it's not too clunky. It's not bad to use for being a little digital camera. It's nice that it has the ability to do that. It has a selectable autofocus point um, and with the with the macro button you can go to spot metering and there's an exposure lock button next to it here because the half press does your focus lock and this will do your exposure lock. So that's really sweet that that is on two separate controls. A lot of them half press locks everything or one or the other. Um, Anyway, I like that feature about it. It also has a manual focus mode. You push and hold the menu button. You push and hold, and you get this little scale on the right, and it changes the focus setting and brings up this little magnified square in the middle so you can see if you've got your focus right. That's pretty sweet. The ISO is selectable from 50, 80, 160, 320, or fully automatic. Uh, it'll do continuous shooting 1.7 frames per second at up to 5 frames. I think that's more of a function of the speed of the XD cards rather than uh, a real camera limitation. The video is showing its age on this. It's 320 by 240. So it's half of VGA with no audio. The flash is pretty nice on this guy. I'm going to switch back to program. Get out of that weird mode. Um, it's got your normal modes and you cycle through them here. Auto, red eye, always on, slow sync, and disabled. And you have to get into the, to the menu to set it. But it also has second curtain sync, which is a feature I use and really like. Um, at wide, um, it goes from 30 inches to, let's see if I can remember here, 12.8 feet, um, that's about 0.7 meters to 3.9 meters, and then when you're fully zoomed, it is uh, good for 8 inches to 7.5 feet, uh, about 0.2 meters, that doesn't sound right, 8 inches, 0.2 meters, maybe that's right, 0.2 meters to 2.3 meters, and it does have a hot shoe. They made a uh, flash that used the smart contacts on here. As long as you don't use one that's got a voltage that's going to fry the camera, it also has a normal ISO contact in the middle, so you can use an old flash on it. Um, it uses a rechargeable lithium-ion battery, and it's under this door on the bottom that I finished turning off. And that's also where the XD card slot is. One thing that's really sweet, the door is well away from the tripod socket, so if you have to pop a different battery in it or your memory card fills up, you don't have to monkey with taking it all the way off the tripod to, you know, to keep shooting. I got a pretty nice kit with it. I'll probably throw it on the floor. Got the charger, USB cable, because I don't have an XD card reader, so I read them right out of the camera that way. Original strap bunch of the ephemera. I don't actually have the paper user manual though. Probably got lost somewhere along the way. I do have a receipt from Fry's from 2003. This camera was $299 when it was new. And I also have the video out cable and this spiffy XD card carrier with another XD card in it. I've really enjoyed shooting with this. 5 megapixels, you're not going to want to make big prints but for doing stuff on the web, it's great. Or just showing on an electronic uh, picture frame, something like that, it's just fine. You're not going to get big blow-ups, but the pictures that it takes, for the size they are, it's pretty sweet. Um, 
I bought a whole bunch of cameras from a friend of mine. So if I get her permission to use some, she took some great pictures with this camera and they were still on the XD card, but I haven't gotten a hold of her yet. Anyway, if she says that's okay, I'll post some that she took over on the blog and I will see you then.